we look like Christmas trees. Or Christmas. We're Christmas. Let me do a bit. I'm wearing green, green and green and red. Hey, maybe that's a hint for Pokemon Day. Maybe it's gonna maybe they're you gonna know that release. you know what means when we get to that point in the episode, the bird or the the bird. <laughs> the Pokemon should be Della Bird. Della Bird? Oh. <laughs> that way uh, we have. <laughs> Well, I, th- I think we're foreshadowing maybe a Pokemon Day announcement. Maybe we'll get um, the original games on um, Virtual Console. Oh, red and green. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Red and oh, blue no, we're not going to get international. Green, yeah, we're not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe mm-hmm. we'll get I I kind of hope we get Ruby and Sapphire because I didn't like Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. I didn't like the art style. I never got a chance to play them. But. Yeah. And it wasn't my favorite. Welcome, everyone, to the PokeBeach.com podcast. I was like, that's a perfect segue into everything. Uh, I am, what's my name? I'm uh, John, Water Pokemon Master on the website, and I am joined by the wonderful Justin Basil of JustinBasil.com. And we are actually recording this episode a day later than usual because, I mean, I guess you should explain it. Yeah, so I'm, I've changed jobs. I'm no longer in retail. I'm in, back in the education space. But that has caused absolute chaos for my schedule. I've had to completely flip my sleep schedule. My, I'm having to get used to the new job. I'm salaried now, so the hours are crazy. A little bit unpredictable at the moment while I'm getting settled in. So, but I'm we'll, very, uh, I'm, go from there. Uh, it's such an accomplishment, though, that you're getting to teach and use your degree, your English degree, and uh, I, I'm I'm very excited for you. Yeah. I mean, it's nice to actually use the degree. I I, mean, I paid money for it. It's good to be able to use it. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, man, I'm not using. Oh, I guess I am using my journalism degree and for. Yeah. You, I mean, you got a, a new site. So. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> well, and, and a film degree. Of, <laughs> I'm still writing a script right now, but I not really. Anyway. Blah, blah, blah. OK, so we've got lots of news <laughs> this week. We do uh, have a fair bit of news. <laughs> um, Shall we let's, get let's into it? Let's go full it? meander. Let, you you pick uh you pick so let's let's jump into the first two stories which are about crimson haze so crimson haze was officially revealed in japan we did anticipate that and it did happen although they waited till the second day to actually show us anything yeah the first uh night they showed us just the booster pack image which featured blood moon or luna which we um of course uh suspected a while ago based off the name yeah. um so we got several cards. Uh, which are do you think are worthy to talk about? So uh, let's jump and start with the new A spec. So oh. unfair stamp. <laughs> I love its name. Yeah. <clears throat> unfair stamp says you can only play this card if one of your Pokemon was knocked out during your opponent's last turn. Each player shuffles their hand into their deck. Then you draw five cards, and your opponent draws two. So this is basically so an unfair. item-based Roxanne with slightly less draw. It's it's not bad. It's it may actually see some play, uh, especially in more controlling decks. Prime uh, Prime Catcher is still very, very good. Although it's very interesting to note that although Prime Catcher is probably still the very dominant uh, A spec over in Japan, basically all of the others have also seen play, uh, and, and a decent amount of it at that. So, um, for example, even Master Ball, the one that we've made a little bit of fun of, because it is just so niche, has managed to find its way not only into a deck, but into a deck that actually won Champions League, the Champions League tournament just this last weekend. So Lugia V-Star was like, you know what? I really need to be able to find things. Master Ball's my guy. I heard your kitty. Um, yeah, he's, he's upset. <laughs> uh, you know, it was funny because when we were first seeing the reveals of those Ace Bet cards, everybody was saying that it was just a uh, prime catcher that would see play. But I was like, well, why would they even design all these different a specs if they're not going to see play so they they knew what they were doing they did but to be fair prime catcher is definitely still the dominant one yeah yes the others are seeing some play but not to the same degree that prime right. catcher is the yes the cape is still seeing play uh, cape, uh, hero's cape yes master ball is even seeing play um but like the the level to which they are seeing play is is quite a bit less still than prime catcher uh what's the next card you want to go over um, let's let's look at uh, Iron Thorns EX. I think both it and the uh, Blood Moon Ursula are worth talking about. So Iron Thorns EX has the ability initialize. While this Pokemon is in the active spot, Pokemon with a rule box in play, except any future Pokemon, have no abilities. So that is a very good effect. It does need to be in the active spot, but there is no longer an escape rope in the format. So there's basically no real way other than gusting it out of the active spot 
to turn your abilities back on if you're not a featured Pokemon. Mm. So pretty good stuff there. Honestly, the cards, um, it's going to go in Future Box, and Future Box is going to really appreciate it. And this really jives quite well with Iron Hands also, because they kind of combo one with one another with them both being lightning typed. Uh, you can still use the uh, electric generators to power either one of them up. So, and then since you're since it moves energies from this to a bench Pokemon, you can literally start with getting this riled up, start getting some chip damage in to set some knockups out knockups out for Iron Hands, and then take those knockouts in the end. Iron Thorns is quite good. Bolt Cyclone. Yeah, good old good old Cyclone attacks doing their uh, moving the energies. LCC Bolt Cyclone, 140 damage. Move one energy from this Pokemon to one of your bench Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Good stuff. And then let's look up at Blood Moon Ursaluna. The star of the set. Uh, a lot of people... It is the star of the set. A lot of people have basically said that this is the Radiant Charizard that's no longer a Radiant and is no longer a single prizer, but it's also really bulky. So it has 260 HP and has the ability Elder's Technique. So this is Pokemon's Blood Moon attack costs one less for each prize card your opponent has already taken. So basically that Blood Moon attack currently has a five colorless attack cost, but each time they take a prize card that drops by one, so it drops rapidly down and makes it easier and easier to power up. So you're doing 240 damage, you won't be able to attack during your next turn, so exactly like the Radiant Charizard and the fact that you would have to switch it out and get it back in there in order to attack again back-to-back -back turns. What did you think but, of... Oh, I'm sorry. But uh, it does have access to tools like the Hero's Cape to make it a massive 360 HP Pokemon on a basic, which is pretty crazy. What did you think of the art on these? I had some opinions. I actually think I like the base art better yeah. than the regular art, than the, the special art. Me too. Um, uh, the, the, yeah, it's just one of those situations. I don't know what I'm looking at with this art. It, it feels very like flat and the perspective is weird. Like I think it's, I think it uprooted a tree maybe and it's trying to eat the honey out of it. And then I don't know. It's, yeah. It's, it's definitely a stylistic choice and one yeah. that I don't maybe appreciate as much as others will. Wasn't this um illustrator? Uh, one of the, wasn't that weren't they in the illustration contest their name looks familiar um let me pull up the article because i'm not seeing very clearly through discord me, here, uh, so. me, mina uh miname take if you google it anyway uh but yeah the the art is like really flat for me i know it's take. kind of confusing what i'm looking at Let's see here. But I do like the Teddy Ursa and the random Munchlax in it and the cuta flies. While he's looking that up, let me explain real quick. So in the video games, Blood Moon Ursaluna is a special uh, Pokemon. It's from the Teal Mask DLC. There's only one of them. Um, it's essentially an event Pokemon. So uh, Ursaring can evolve into Ursaluna, uh, but uh, Ursaring can never evolve into a Blood Moon Ursaluna. And this is because Blood Moon Ursaluna is a Ursaluna that traveled from Hisui to Kitakami in the past and adapted to the region and then basically transformed into Blood Moon Ursaluna. So it's a, it's a unique individual Pokemon. And we're expecting to get um, this set as well as April's Mask of Change in our Twilight Masquerade set in May. So both Blood Moon Ursaluna and Ogre Pond should be our two of the mascots for that set. Did you manage to find the artist while I stalled? I did. So yes, they were part of the illustration contests. They were a finalist in 2002 or sorry, 2022. Oh, okay. uh, they had an Arcanine artwork that did very well. Their first card in the TCG was actually the Charmander promo mm. where the Charmander is kind of peeking in through the window at a, right. out the window rather at a very, very angrily at a Pidgey. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I actually really liked that one, but I love that art too, this but one, yeah, this this one not this as one. ideal. Maybe if we saw it in person, it'd be better. But yeah. the art as is is not really doing it for me. All right, uh, were there any other cards that were worthy of talking about? Um, I mean, I think the only other thing that's really worth noting is uh, the enhanced hammer reprint. It's yeah. nice to see that come back. It's actually really, really quite funny too. I had been talking with one of my friends about the potential for enhanced hammer to be returning to the TCG. And we were both kind of like, oh, that'd be really good. Let's let's that'd be nice if it came back. 
And then one of the very first cards they reveal from this set is Enhanced Hammer. And that was not even a week later. I was like, well, cool timing. I guess they agreed. Maybe you should be a game designer for this. <laughs> Maybe. For this card game. I would you love see, to do it. To you do seem it. to know some stuff about it. Um, oh, you follow the game long enough, you get there. And then this Fione um, illustration rare. Uh, it looks like the artist pa actually painted this on a canvas because you can see the texture of the canvas here. The canvas lines. Yeah, it's um, cool. Yeah, it's different. Uh, it's kind of funny that Fiona is just like the only. It's just funny that it's surrounded by all these Whalmer and Waylord. It's almost like the illustr the artist wanted to make like a Whalmer Waylord card and then just threw Fiona in there. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, we get we got a uh, we got Applin and Diplin in this set. We don't know if we're going to get um, Hydrapple in this set they might be saving it for um a later set because uh diplin debuted before hydrapple did in the uh what was the second dlc uh teal uh not teal mask um indigo disc indigo disc yeah so they might be saving it we don't know yet card game sometimes does its own thing so um i kind of hope it's in this set but maybe they'll yeah, we got a bunch. So the newer Paradox Pokemon kind of early. Yeah, so it's possible we get High Drabble, but I also could see them not putting it in here. It's 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 very much a toss up. It's funny because I feel like they would have revealed it. So I feel like they would have too. Yeah, so, I think they would have. And it's not High Drabble on the pack art either. It's it's Diplin. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, right? you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I genuinely think that High Drabble's probably not in this set. Yeah. So I guess they're gonna follow the games and they're gonna introduce it. On its own first, and then maybe, and then they'll probably introduce the second evolution line in um, mm -hmm. that future uh, set. What was it called again? Um, uh, Mask of Change. No, 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 no. Um, the the one with that we think is uh, It was Stellar Miracle. Yeah, Stellar yeah. Miracle. So maybe it'll be in that set. All right, and uh, was was that it? You didn't want to talk about Screamtail EX. Um, no, we should talk about it. It's still good too. Uh, it's just less exciting in general, uh, I like but it the, is good. I like the uh, art on this. It's one. a it's a decent it's a decent menace and and guardy, uh, especially early on. Guard of War maybe might might like this or at least appreciate the card as an option. So it has a shriek as its first attack for colorless energy. You can use this attack only if you go second and only during your first turn. During your opponent's next turn, they can't play any supporter cards from their hand. So that's not horrible you can kind of slow them down because they won't have if they've gone first and you're going second they won't have been able to use a supporter card on their first turn so this basically prevents them from using it on their second turn either which can then really really slow them down and cripple their setup and then crunch of course psychic colorless colors does 120 damage and discards and energy from your opponent's active pokemon so as an attacker not the best but as a, a shrieker if you will to slow your opponent down it's not bad it, it definitely has a use I like the artwork on this one. It doesn't feel like the typical um, five five band artwork. No, it's not five band. That would be no, why. no, I know. I mean, I, I like when they use different artists for the for. Yeah, the it's EX great. The base EX cards. Uh, cool. All right. So uh, we yep. have two more cards that were revealed from Crimson Haze this week. They are Iron Leaves and Walking Wake. So. Were those yeah. any good? And shout out to Stefan for catching these because they kind of sneaked these out on us. Oh, yeah. He posted them uh, in the morning when I was mm -hmm. asleep. And uh, I yeah. assume you were getting ready for work. Your new job. Yep. Uh, didn't, okay. didn't even click that there was going to be a reveal because usually they don't reveal cards like this quite this early in their reveal cycle. Usually they just do the, the Friday or Thursday, Friday dump. Yeah, it's also funny because we ha this was the only reveal uh, this week, so or so mm -hmm. far. Um, okay, so are they any good? Iron Leaves, Walking Wake. Um, I think at least Iron Leaves is worth thinking about. Uh, Iron Leaves has the attack recovery net for a single grass energy. It says put up two Pokemon from your discard pile into your hand. That's fine, whatever. And then Grass Colors Colors has Vengeful Edge. It does 100 plus damage. If any of your Pokemon were knocked out by damage from an attack from your opponent uh, during your opponent's last turn. This attack does 60 more damage. So that's 160 if something was knocked out for three energy, which is hopefully not too difficult to pull off. And then you're not going to one-shot Charizard immediately if you just have this out. But you do have the Cobalt Command ability on Iron Crown EX that will help boost the damage on this so that you could be one-shotting 
the Charizards with this little single prizer and really be a thorn in their side. So Vengeful Edge, Vengeful Edge, especially in combination with a couple of Iron Crown, could be a really interesting option against Charizard decks. And then we'll look at Walking Wake since it's here anyway. So Walking Wake is a basic Pokemon, 130 HP, Ancient, Aurora Gain for a single Water Energy, 20 damage, heal 20 damage from this Pokemon. And then the the main attack on this guy is Water Water Colorless, Cleaving Wave, Cleaving Wave, 20 times damage, put up to nine damage counters on this Pokemon. This attack does 20 damage for each damage counter you put in this wave. So we've seen this type of attack quite a number of times, usually on a stage one. Uh, the most recent iteration of this was the Chilling Rain Bennett that did basically the same thing, but you could only put seven instead. But it was also a much cheaper attack. Water Water Colorless is quite a demanding attack cost. So it does make me wonder if there's maybe some decent water acceleration coming soon, hmm. perhaps. Um, don't know for sure. That, that attack cost is quite awkward, too, because it's not like Iron Leaves where it's Grass Double Colorless. In this case, it's Water Water Colorless, making it even more difficult to pull off. Uh, but you get up to nine, which is good. And then uh, prior to Bennett, of course, we had Frostlass, which is kind of the, the big one for this. Uh, that one actually saw for a decent amount of play when it was around. Uh, and then a, a little rulings information for those who are curious. Uh, let's say your Walking Wake is already damaged. They managed not to knock it out, perhaps after you'd use cl uh, Cleaving Wake the, the turn prior. Uh, you would be able to use it again and put nine more damage counters on it. Even though it Ooh. would knock out Walking Wake, you would still get the full damage. So it's, wow. a, it's a little interesting uh, attack. Nice. Yep. Um, and, uh, we should start really be getting the reveals for this set, uh, next week, I'm assuming. So yeah, we should be getting them fairly soon here. Cause the, the set reveal or the set of the full set reveal would be the Thursday before. So it's the set releases out. the 22nd, right? Yeah. No, no, no. Crimson Haze. No. Okay. Yeah. So we have a little bit of time still. Yeah. Um, Crimson Haze is the 22nd. Uh, so the full set reveal will probably be the 14th of March. Mm -hmm. Which so is, yeah, we'll, if not this next week, the week after for sure. Well, it's less than a month away, isn't it? So it should from the full reveal. Um. Yes, it is. Yeah. So they should start going into it. Uh. Next week, we'll see. Uh. What's our next story you want to cover? Let's talk about Japanese uh, Pokemon centers selling this product. Okay. So. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Pokemon centers in Japan are now selling English Pokemon TCG products. And this is this uh, when I first saw this, I was baffled. So uh, we received numerous reports. Pokemon centers in Japan have started selling a wide variety of English products, including booster boxes, sleeved packs, mini tins, figure collections, Pokemon Center elite trainer boxes, play mats and card sleeves, as you can see mm -hmm. right here. So all of them have a sticker on the front, as you can see right here, um, that's just slapped over the packaging that says overseas version. And the prices are basically equivalent to what our MSRP is. Um, these have been spotted at multiple Pokemon centers. Now, this will come into play in a bit in a second, but the products include every set from Brilliant Stars through Paldea Evolved. So... Um, that's a bit of a hint for what I'm about to say. And then um, the online Japanese Pokemon Center has also started selling play mats from our Pokemon Centers. Those famously sort of basic ones that not many people like. Um, no, no, no. I think the Pokemon Center ones are okay. Yeah, but they... Uh, Ultra Pro. No, no, that's for sure. But they do tend to get criticized in the comments. Um I mean, I, I really like that pixel one that they came out with recently, but like, I don't mm. know. They they feature the corporate artwork that we talked about last week. I mean, yeah, I guess that's a little unfair. They are a little bit better than Ultra Pro, but they do get some hate. But anyway, so they started selling those on their online Pokemon Center. So why is this happening? Well, I kind of theorized this could be leftover stock from Worlds 2023 in Yokohama. Um, most of these products were sold there. So I kind of think that um, maybe TPCI just left the stock in Japan. Maybe it was probably, I don't know, it might have cost more to ship it back to the States than it would be to just sell it at the Japanese Pokemon Centers. Um, they also go up to Paldea Evolved, which was the last set to re release before Worlds, which plays into that speculation. Um, it's also unclear why these products are releasing specifically this week. Um, the timing is kind of curious with Pokemon Day coming up. Uh, on Tuesday. 
So, um, yeah, we'll see if this is a unique uh, promotion, which I suspect it will be, or if they'll start doing this in the future. But there are um, Pokemon centers in Singapore also do get English products uh, as well as um, in Southeast Asia. So that they could have also maybe shipped it from there um, for some reason, but uh, to sell at the Japanese Pokemon centers. But I think it's probably just leftover stock, but we'll see. Yeah, it's, I mean, they could have, if it were Japanese, or if it were leftover from the worlds, they could theoretically have sent it to Singapore to sell, but maybe have decided that wasn't worth it either. Yeah, so uh, we'll find out. Um, but yeah, I think it's probably just leftover stock, but we'll see. All yeah, right. It's still interesting. Yeah. Um, I wonder how, like, so um, uh, Nicholas H., one of our staff members who um, took the photos for the story, um he said that Japanese fans were very shocked by this and um, a lot of them were actually buying it. So um, I know that like hobby stores in Japan will sometimes sell English products because there is interest in them. So um, I actually would be curious to follow up on this to see if um, how quickly how well those... they sell. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll follow up with him and see if they've been cleared out or not. It also, I guess, depends on just how many, um, how much leftover stock there was, you know, it's also interesting. Like, I, I wonder if they did this on purpose originally, like did, or did they just not sell all of this? Like, I don't know. I think a lot of this, a lot of the boxes, like the merchandise for sealed cards, I could see not selling especially quickly, but like the play mats and stuff is a kind of a question mark to me. Cause usually that stuff sells yeah. pretty fast. Yeah. And when I, when I was in the world store in Yokohama, they had a ton of product, of, of this stuff. So, um, and, uh, so I, I don't know, maybe they did it on purpose. Maybe they left some for, uh, Japan to sell because it'll somehow tie into Pokemon day. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if there's a reason or if it's just leftovers. Yeah, like we're going to allow, we're going to allow English language cards in Japan, in Japan. I doubt and ju- that. But that'd be hilarious. Yeah. And just to be clear, <laughs> like they've never done this before. So this is like, no, it's very, different. very different. Uh, let me see. What's our next story of the week? <laughs> I skipped over one. What's our next story of the week? Let's talk about TPCI warning hobby stores to not I- sell stuff. How's that? Sounds good. So um, TPI has sent hobby stores a sort of timeline guide on when they are allowed to sell the promo cards and materials that the company provides them for Pokemon leagues. Um, This is coming off the heels of an email they sent in December warning leagues about the misuse or warning hobby stores about the misuse of Pokemon league materials. Um, back in December, they had cited issues such as selling play Pokemon prize packs, selling league stamped promos, um, s- promotional material, uh, pre-release build and battle boxes early. So, um, this is something they are definitely concerned about. Um, so in this new email that they just sent, um, the company spe- specifically specified that play Pokemon prize packs can never be sold. Um, we saw this violated last month when hordes of play, uh, play pack series four appeared on eBay. As you can see in these photos here, these were obviously coming from hobby stores who should not have been selling them. So um, TPCI is obviously aware of this and is warning leagues, not hobby stores that run leagues, not to do this. Um, they warned that failure to follow these guidelines can result in disciplinary action, including the removal of a Pokemon league from your store or suspension from play Pokemon programs. So they are very serious about this. Um, they also, and I would like to, I would like to chime in real quick on disciplinary sure. action. They are taking action. One of the leagues here locally actually lost all their sanctioned events for the next quarter. Oh, because really? Because somebody wow. reported them for selling league promos. So wow. they are taking action. Good, good. I see. I was wondering about that. I I wanted to put in the story like we're gonna research to see how um they actually if they actually enforce this. So that that would actually maybe be a cool follow up yeah, so story. They, they lost their they lost their cup. They lost their challenge. They lost their pre release for temporal forces. Basically, all those sanctioned events that they would have, they're done. They don't have them anymore. That's really cool that they're that they're actually enforcing it because these are meant to be free product that's supposed to promote growing your player base and it's not meant for stores to like be making money off of it. You know, mm-hmm. the money is being made when people come into your store and uh, play Pokemon there and 
buy the product there, you know, and support your league. It shouldn't be, you shouldn't be making your money off freebies. Um, so it's nice that they are enforcing this. And also TPCI also went the extra mile and um, stated in their email that if you manage to get singles from prize packs, such as if you buy them from a player, um, you can only sell those cards three years after their printed copyright year. So this prevents stores from getting around selling the packs, uh, from trying to open the packs and just sell the cards individually. You can't do right. that. You have to. You can only sell them three years after their printed copyright year and only starting next year. So this means that no hobby store that has a Pokemon League can um, sell single cards at all until at least next year. So you should not be seeing your hobby store selling these cards from the prize packs. So this does kind of disadvantage stores that don't have a league though, because they can sell these without issue. The only thing, the only thing it would punish them with is that they just aren't going to ever get sanctioned if they have these on sale. Yeah. I, I would think that, I mean, I don't know the logistics, but I would think that having a league and having players coming in every week would be a benefit to a store. Right. Cause you're, your I fans mean, are, you would think so, but maybe some stores don't, don't agree. Hmm. I just think in like in the long run, like growing a player base that goes to your store every week, like I would think that would bring in a lot of money over time because your your fans, your your player base is buying your products at your store. I don't know. Um, and then they also specified that pre-release staff promos can only be sold three years after their printed copyright year as well. So, um, again, this doesn't apply to like if you're a, a player that. Uh, gets these cards, you know, from running events or, you know, getting the booster packs from participating in your league, you can still sell these cards. Um, it's just, this is all to prevent stores from doing dubious um, things to, uh, you know, put these products on their shelves and make money off them. So um, here's the full timetable that they uh, provided in the email, which I've edited for some clarity. But basically, um, yeah, you can't even, and it, this table also has like, you can't even sell the uh, play mats that they give for Lee's pr league prizing, um, until two years after their printed copyright year. So yeah, I think this is all a very good thing. Like I said, uh, these yeah. products are meant for the players and to grow a, your player base. So they're not meant for you to like take them from players and sell them like that's, totally hoodwinking the system. So I'm glad that they are taking action on this. And, uh, and I'm especially glad to hear what you just said about um, them enforcing this. We should actually follow up with that um, because I feel like sometimes it doesn't feel like they actually do enforce <clears throat> some of the things they say, at least just from my perspective, not being um, not hearing everything that goes on. So it would be good to follow up on that. Disciplinary action. Uh, cool. What's our next story? Let's see. What haven't we done yet? <laughs> uh, I know what we haven't done yet. That's oh, okay. stupid Pikachu. <laughs> All right. Let's get it out of the way. Okay. So uh, another wave of Pikachu Van Gogh promos is going to release in the Netherlands this weekend, and it's going to be a big wave of them. And we've also confirmed that a third wave is coming. So this card is being printed into the ground uh, to the yeah. uh, sorrow of uh, investors and Redditors who uh, are scalping this. So um, Inner Toys and Media Market Stores have announced they will be giving out another batch of promos this Saturday, February 24th. As with the first wave, customers will have to spend 30 euros on Pokemon TCG products. Both of those stores are the largest chain stores in the Netherlands. They have 260 stores combined. Last time, they each got an average of 150 copies. Um, we don't quite know how many they're going to get this time, but we'll find out. And then um, at the time of posting, this uh, it hadn't been announced yet, but... Primera and Bruna stores in the Netherlands are also going to be getting a restock this weekend. So basically everyone's getting a restock. Um, so uh, we also learned that inner toy stories, inter toy stores are going to hold at least one more giveaway. There's going to be a third wave. We don't know when it will be, but it could be in two Saturdays again. Um, we originally estimated that based off the math that the initial giveaway would uh, see a hundred thousand copies of the 
promo card released into the global market. But now it's clear that is completely underestimating the ultimate total. It's definitely way above that. Currently, the price of the card sits at 60 euros on the secondary market on um, card market, which is basically double what fans paid to receive it. Um, in from January to early February, it costs between 105 and 120 euros. So this means that the first wave of uh, releases that just happened cut the cost of the card by 25 to 50 percent. So it'll be interesting to see how much more it goes down for this third um, actually weekend. We have an update on that. Oh, I was Let just me... about to ask. Yeah, thank you. Tell me what it is we, now. We do have an update on that. Let me send you. A link. No, just tell me. Just tell me. It's okay. Okay, so it looks like it's down to 40 euro. Oh, it's down to 40 euros now? Great. It's into the 40 frame. Yeah, so it's dropped even further. Great. That is very Which good is news. quite so, fun, yeah. So it's That's, It's amazing to see that just drop, drop, drop. Yeah, I'll follow up on it next, uh, next week on what's happening. So, I mean, everybody was criticizing the company, including us, for botching how they handled the initial release of this card. So and and we did say back then when they announced that they were going to release this into the Netherlands that this is you know it's um, good that they listen and take corrective action. So you have to give them credit for that. Um, yep. That they listened and that they course corrected. Uh, I don't know why they made such a big mistake in the first place with how they handled this, but I speculated back then that the you know the company's been going through growing pains. They've been expanding exponentially lately from what we hear so maybe they just i don't know didn't have the experience at the time maybe they had new people there that didn't know how these tend to go but they have corrected it now so that's this is good and then um on tcg player the price is now around or as of posting the price was 114 dollars which was down from 130 to 160 that we saw from december to early february this means the first wave of releases of this card cut the cost by 15 to 30 percent uh the american market is more expensive because copies have to be shipped here so what is it now on tcg player so it looks like about 90 to 95 dollars on tcg player so it's still oh, fairly damn. high but definitely still down it's going down though it is going down that's great mm -hmm. to hear so uh yeah we'll see how much it drops over the coming weeks i'll, I'll do a follow-up on this story next week but um, yeah, it's great. I mean, I st I still don't have this card. <laughs> uh, I mean, I haven't really tried like to get said, it. Like you said, you don't even want it at this <laughs> no, point. No, I don't. I'm so sick of seeing it. But it has been fun yeah, to report. It has been fun to report on this. Uh, as a fan, I am sick of it. But as a reporter, I have had a lot of fun doing the research and talking to people and all the controversy that has happened along the way and interviewing scalpers and museum employees and um it's been fun to do research on this story and follow it because it kind of is a symptom of um the larger things that are going on in this card game so that mm -hmm. part of it i have enjoyed doing but the actual I, the actual card i'm sick of seeing it now if somebody walks up to me and hands me one i would probably take it but i'm not gonna <laughs> i'm not gonna buy this card <laughs> I, I'm not, That's despite funny, what people on Reddit are saying. They were still saying this week that we're trying to... I don't know who these people are that, like, um, that are calling us, like, clowns for saying that the price of this card is going down when it's an objective fact and saying that, uh, that they're, like, in denial that this card is seeing mass releases, which I also don't understand when we have the facts right here. So I don't know if there may be like investors who, but or there's want to be just, investors. We're just making stuff up. But yeah, we are. It's not real. There's not some. There's not some giant influx of cards that are actually taking the price. Yeah, I. I mean, I don't. I don't know who these people are. Maybe they're want to be investors who listened to people on. I don't know because I think there were. I I saw people saw some commenters making reference to. Uh, I don't watch YouTube, but like they were saying that some YouTubers back when it first came out said to invest in this card and it was going to be worth a lot and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So maybe they're, I don't know, butthurt that um, the card, they invested in the card initially and then the price just dropped so much. I don't know. They're like in denial, maybe. Who knows? I don't know. But, yeah. you know, just uh, again, like I've been doing this 21 years. Pokey Beach has been around, has evolved with the game. 
and covered the game since the very beginning. So like, uh, you know, listen to people who maybe have been here for a long time who aren't motivated by money and who were here during Pokemon's lows. So, you know, we're, we're true fans. We're, we're here for the fans. We're not here for investors or money-making people. So uh, we our heart is in the right place most of the time. Sometimes I want to yeah. strangle people. Uh, we, we, yeah, we try to be in the right place. <laughs> Sometimes I want to strangle people, but yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, all right. So let's talk about uh, Pokemon Day now. Um, so we are going to get a Pokemon Presents on Tuesday at uh, 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, 2 p.m. GMT. And... Uh, it's going to have new news for the year as we see every year they they release they reveal the big pokemon news of the year they reveal like what's going to happen in the video games if there's going to be a dlc a new game um uh last year they revealed the world's 2023 location and dates they revealed pokemon concierge the stop motion show on netflix they revealed uh the release date for pokemon sleep and new details um they released uh they revealed Walking Wake and Iron Leaves for the video games. They revealed the hidden treasure of Area Zero. And they revealed Pokemon uh, TCG Classic, the box set. So that's what we got last year. That's the kind of magnitude of announcements they make. So this year, I know there's a lot of fans that have speculated we'll get maybe like black and white remakes or some kind of game that takes place in Unova or... Just some kind of Unova thing. Um, some people are uh, speculating maybe we'll get a Let's Go Johto thing. Um, so that's currently where the fandom is kind of sitting right now. Um, what I do tend to tell people for these reveals is that it's always, it's always, it's never what you exactly expect. There's always like a twist, something you don't anticipate. So I don't know if it would be as linear as like, oh, we had Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. So we're going to now get Let's Go, I don't know, Togepi and Wooper or whatever. So uh, they would probably do some kind of twist. But anyway, that's my opinion. I've been talking. This here's here's my what twist. Do you think? Instead of trying to instead of trying to remake Black and White and Black and White 2 or Black and White 2, they just re-release them as virtual console and say, here, be happy. You I guys mean, didn't like it when we put any effort in with Brent Diamond Shining Pearl. Just have that. You know, it's it's funny because we've talked about this before. I didn't actually like black and white that much, and I think at the time it was because for me it was releasing on the um, it was releasing again on the DS. So we had Diamond and Pearl on the DS, and then we got black and white on the DS. So it didn't feel like a jump. And then they also kind of like reset the world because. Um, all of the, um, they didn't have um, any of the previous Pokemon in the, at least in the first playthrough of the game, I think I remember. It was all, you know, they it, they had equivalents of Pokemon that we had before. Like, instead of the Machamp line, we got the Conkledur line. Or uh, what are some other examples? Um, they had a lot of, like, Kanto equivalents in that they turned into Unova Pokemon. Yeah, there was a lot of that. And and to me, at least in my opinion, a large number of the Unova Pokemon are fairly over-designed in general. Yeah, I um, also... A lot of yeah. sharp edges, a lot of, like, yeah, it's just kind of over-designed. I didn't like a lot of the Unova Pokemon, and I think that also kind of tainted it for me. And I... I but, I mean, I, I remember the story was pretty decent i think i think the story was no the story is not really an issue i think you yeah. know the story is fine so uh, I it's just it's it's everything else <clears throat> now that we've had some distance from black and white i mean it doesn't really feel like that to me I, I mean it feels like it released yesterday honestly aging but um now that we've had some distance maybe i'll appreciate them more i don't know if they if they can if they can do, if they do release a remake or something, or maybe they put a spin on it, maybe it's like in a paradox timeline. I don't know if they can put a spin on it. Maybe I'll appreciate it more. Um, but yeah, who knows? And for the trading card game, like I can't imagine what they would possibly reveal. That would be something, it would have to be maybe a product, 
but um, they usually save the TCG big reveals for worlds. Mm -hmm. So like if they're going to do some kind of, um, you know, Tropagos uh, mechanic or uh, what, what's the stellar type thing, they would probably save that for worlds. I don't think they would put that yeah. in here. Um, I think the only uh, time... We would, we would get Terrapagos before Worlds, or we'd see it before Worlds, right? In the TCG, most likely? E was We don't know when that set's releasing yet. That could be July or August. But yeah, I guess we yeah, would. Yeah, but Worlds probably. would be in August. Either yeah, way, yeah, we'd yeah. see it. We would, but if they introduce Terrapagos and then they have like the uh, Stellar type somehow introduced in the card game, Stellar type could come later. I don't know. It also depends on... Uh, it's hard to predict right now what's going to happen with the card game because we don't know what the video games have in store right now. Um, the video games inform the card game. And right now all we have are the DLCs. So it's it's a little hard to go beyond um, this summer because we don't know what's going to happen with the games. So the only thing we can anticipate yeah. is Tropagos going to get revealed and then maybe they'll do something with Stellar type. Um, but that's it. We can't really go beyond that because we don't have the video games to inform us right now. But... We'll probably have a lot of speculation <clears throat> next week when Pokemon Day happens. So, um, the only yeah, time they've the only time they've ever revealed anything for the card game during Pokemon Day was last year, Pokemon TCG Classic. So I don't know. Maybe we'll get some other product. Who knows? Maybe we'll get Pokemon Two Fifty One announced. That would be cool. I don't know. Sorry, what were you saying? I don't remember anymore. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we interrupt each other sometimes. Then we lose our trains of thoughts. Um, and then, uh, speaking of Pokemon Day, let's go over the Pokemon Day store giveaways for the card game. Um, so, starting yesterday, a Cerulege promo was going to be given out at Best Buy, BestBuy.com, GameStop, PokemonCenter.com, Target, and Walmart. Um, if you're on PokemonCenter.com, you use code PDAY2024 during checkout to get the card. I love this promo card, to be honest with you. I love that the Cerulege is printed on the Galaxy slash Cosmos holofoil paper. Um, I like that there's a stamp there. I like that they're releasing it before Pokemon Day to hype the weekend before Pokemon Day on Tuesday to hype up fans. Um, you have to spend $15 or more to get it. Availability will vary at physical stores, so you will, you'll probably want to call before going. Um... I might kind of go out of my way to get this, but we'll see. I have kickball today. Yeah, so. it helps that the art on the Sarah Ledge is really good, mm -hmm. but it is it is a card we already have, just not with the Cosmos Holofoil. Yeah, but I have a special place in my heart for Cosmos Holofoil, and I love Sarah Ledge's design. I love that it's purple. I love that it's ghosty, ghost type. So this um, is this is kind of a peak, though. I like that this card is kind of a peak. Is how good the cards would look if they just made all of the hollows in the sets Cosmos Hollow Foil. Yeah, just but saying. we've um, I put before in articles. I, don't think I know we've talked about yeah. this one to death, but they're not uh, they're I not going to do it. I don't think they're going to do it because uh, it it would diminish. I don't know. It 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 gives promos something special and gives fans a reason to go out of the way to get promos and. The hollows are in every pack now, so if they just give out Cosmos in every pack, it's going to diminish their um, perception. If you just pull them out of every pack and you're throwing them to the side, you know they, it makes them less special. At least that's my opinion, or that's my theory. Um, yeah. And then they'll also at Europe, they're giving them out at the Pokemon Center website using the same code PDA twenty twenty four in Canada. They'll give them out at Toys R Us, GameStop, Pokemon Center Canada using code PDA2024CA. In Australia, EB Games is giving them, a, an amount, giving them out. In Latin America, various retailers are giving them out like Toys R Us. Official Nintendo Store in New York is giving them out. And then, um, so Pokemon Leagues on Tuesday, on the actual Pokemon Day, select Pokemon Leagues are going to be having um, special Pokemon Day activities. They're going to be hosting like tournaments, how to play how to play sessions and raffles. It's going to depend on the Pokemon League what kind of activities they're going to do. But participants are going to receive um, unreleased Pokemon League promo cards, sealed TCG mer merchandise code cards, and even Pikachu moods figures from the um, Pokemon Center. So, um, 
did we talk about this last week or I we did remember. not because it hadn't been revealed yet last week so these cards these promo cards that we're seeing in these packs here they were all cards that were released on Pokemon trading card game online as digital promos uh but we never got them physically so now no we're no them physically no we did get them physically in other countries but not in, in not in the united states they were never released in the u.s but we did get them in uh latin america and um, some other countries because these are these are on these were on eBay and stuff um, during those times. Uh, but uh, yeah, so each of the packs, the packs. So we, we have here Colossal with Pokemon League stamp, Flapple, Twin Energy, Galarian, Mr. Mime with also a thank you stamp because this was originally going to be a um, hobby store giveaway uh, with the marketing kit which did release in Latin America, but not here. And uh, Pikachu with the Pokemon League stamp. These were all from uh, Rebel Clash, Darkness Ablaze, and Evolving Skies. Um, so uh, the Pokemon Leagues have received packs of these cards. They The batches of them vary. Some are 40, some are 50. And this is because the cards were printed back then, and TPCI held on to them um, until this point. So that's why um, they needed to wait until all their cards were rotated so they could give them away. Got it. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> they were holding on to them because they printed them back then. And yeah. So uh, blah, 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 I just ranted. So, um, yeah. So you can see here that um, you get the in this photo, you get the uh, the Pokemon leagues are receiving these promo cards. They're also getting um, Pokemon Go tins, such as the uh, the one with the Snorlax promo, the Pikachu promo, the um, Pokeball tins that released. Um, they're also getting um, uh, Pokemon Center Elite Trainer boxes. Uh, the Pokemon League that sent us these photos in particular got Lost Origin. These Pikachu mood figures, each Pokemon League's getting three of them. Pikachu in love, Pikachu confused, Pikachu... Uh, what is this one? asleep and uh, the tins that I mentioned uh, also sticker sheets Pokemon go uh, code cards for PTCG live we don't know what those are going to redeem in the program yet they're also getting exclusive dice for Pokemon day as you can see here there's a Pikachu dice die dice if I had to guess on the Pokemon go code I think it's probably the professor's research oh with professor Willow maybe and then, um, are we able to get a closer? Yeah, I'll, I'll get it up in here. That's fine. No, it 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 just says uh, Pokemon Go at League Code Card T two. Interesting. So I don't know what that'll be. And then, um, a lot of the leagues of that are participating are also going to get uh, tutorial kits, including the um, the half decks that we've seen released at Play Pokemon tournaments. These feature non hollow versions of Greninja V, Umbreon V, and Lucario V. So um, you've used these before at tournaments, right? You've done these tutorial sessions. Do you, is this what you use? No, we didn't use these. We had a whole different system set up for it. Oh, I thought you... Um, my league you... has received these, but we've never actually... We've never used them. Oh. Our league has its own materials for teaching people how to play. So we have them on hand. And uh, if people, player are very, players are very interested in picking something up but don't necessarily have the funds right away, a lot of times we'll give them just two of the same one so they can put a deck together that way. Oh, that's cool. I, you, so you guys do your own thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've had we've had a set of like uh, learn to play decks for a long time. I have six myself. I know another one of the professors there has another three or four that he has, and then uh, so we got like ten ish decks roughly, always on hand, ready for to teaching people how to play. Nice. Um, so for these uh, giveaways and these activities on Pokemon Day on Tuesday, you're going to need to contact your local Pokemon League to find out what their plans are, if any, because not every league is going to participate. Um, and then the leagues are not going to be giving out the Cerule Edge promo. Those are exclusive to retailers. And then also this weekend, as we mentioned before, um, stores in the Netherlands are going to be giving out a second round of Pikachu with gray felt hat promos. Have to spend 30 euros or more on them. And uh, we also heard that they're going to be coming with a Pokemon Day goodies bag. We don't know yet what these will contain or how many stores are going to have them. Um, so I will follow up on that next week. So I that's almost it for the week. We have just have some English reveals from Temporal Forces, which releases on March 22nd. 
Um, is there anything you want to say about these English reveals? Um, not really. I mean, I hate that it's Buddy Buddy Poffin instead of Buddy Poffin, but that's about it. Yeah, so we've got the reveal of Buddy Buddy Poffin, which is definitely going to see play. Um, yeah. Got some cool art of Raging Bolt <clears throat> EX and the special illustration wear. And yeah, the set Temporal Forces is just going to be based on uh, Wild Force and Cyber Judge. So there aren't going to be too many surprises in the set. We already, fans on the Poke Beach forums have pretty much already compiled the whole set list. So there aren't going to be surprises. There. I mean, I've, I've had it up for a while. The biggest question marks are surrounding oh, yeah, the yeah. And I'm sorry. slots. And, and I'm slightly sorry. off. And I'm sorry, check Justin Basil's website as well because he has a uh, he has the set list there that he's uh, speculated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think it's important to note that it is, it is speculation. So we don't know. We don't have confirmation yet. But uh, at the same time, like we can guess ninety nine percent of the set fairly easily. Yeah, we have we have a lot of people who really pay attention to this stuff and have before pretty much hundred percent predicted set lists. So uh, yeah, the, we're not going to see too much uh, surprises with temporal forces. So that is yeah. it for the week. That was a lot of uh, fun news this week. I had I enjoyed writing mm -hmm. those articles this week. I, I've so I've talked before how I have like these sleep issues, but I've been getting up every day at 7 a.m. and I get I get my coffee, which I, I was never a coffee drinker up until like a month or two ago. But I get up, I have my coffee, I work on an article for maybe two, three hours, and then I post it. And uh, so it's been fun getting into a routine now and getting these articles up. And I have a list of articles I want to do next week, too. So um, that's my spiel. I don't know why I said that, but that's what I've been doing. Explosion of the Pokemon trading card game competitive scene. <laughs> the what? You're going to talk about the explosion of the uh, TCG uh, competitive scene. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's one article coming up. We're going to talk about mm -hmm. how the competitive scene has been growing. What are the other stories I was working on? We're going to follow up on the Pikachu Van Gogh. Um, what was the other follow up? There was some other follow up this week. Um, we were going to potentially talk about... I was potentially going to write an article about um, the Pokemon TCG having like a plastic issue with their products, like too much plastic. I've been seeing a lot of people mm. talking about that lately. Um, and then next Even week, I complained about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did. So I might about do the metal too. I might do a story about that. Um, and then uh, we're of course going to have the Pokemon Day news on Tuesday. So I will get up an hour early for that to cover that. And yeah, and for the first time in seven years, I will not be able to watch that live, which is very unfortunate. Well, so. Yeah, but you have bigger and better things that you're doing. You are teaching the youth of the future. So mm -hmm. thank you for listening. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, you, were you telling me something about Apple Podcasts? Yes, if you're on Apple Podcasts, be sure to leave us a review. Uh, if you leave us a five-star review, we might even read it on the podcast. So heads up. And then, uh, yeah, Deli Bird is your Pokemon for today. Deli Deli. Because red and green. Mm -hmm. It goes Deli yeah. Deli. No, we should hit, we should do black and white. Don't you think? But the shirts. Well, how about do <laughs> do do that what we what he just said and then do uh do say paradox Zekrom. How about that? That would be weird. <laughs> I don't know. Mecha Mecha Zekrom. No, no, Paradox Ekron. Maybe the, maybe they'll do black and white with a twist like that. I don't know. Anyway, all right. Uh, it was fun. We will see you all next week for all the Pokemon Day announcements and probably more cards from uh, Crimson Haze. But thanks for listening, and have a good week. Have a good one.